comrades and friends, compañeras y compañeros, I'm very honored to deliver this special Workers' World Party announcement. Many of you, I am sure, have been glued to the news over the last several weeks, as I have, watching the spectacle, otherwise known as the 2016 presidential elections. Who will get the Republican or Democratic Party nomination? Which representative for the capitalist system will win the White House on November the 8th, 2016? Many of you, I am also sure, have wasted no time whatsoever watching these shenanigans, especially that of master clown Donald Trump. It is easy to dismiss the circus, but dismiss it, we cannot. And that is why Workers' World Party is announcing today that we are entering the 2016 presidential election. tell you why, how, and who. First, let me clarify. We are not running candidates because we at all believe that the elections that take place every four years matter. The change in the guard means little for the everyday lives of the workers and the oppressed. Fundamental decisions about our lives don't come from Washington despite all the huffing and puffing that come from Wall Street and the Pentagon. Our party does not aspire to be in the White House. That building was founded on slavery, on the genocide of Native people, on the robbery of Mexico, and on imperialist plunder abroad. It reeks with the blood, sweat, and tears of countless workers who have been exploited and crushed by this system, not just from the US, but from around the world. The elections don't make a difference, but I do have one sidebar, the election of Barack Obama in 08. The election of the first black president in the US did matter in the context of centuries of racism and struggle for self-determination. Our party was in complete solidarity with the sentiment among the black masses that took a sense of pride and victory that a black family would be in the White House for the very first time. That principle is called Leninism, despite the fact that we are talking about the imperialist president. Revolutionary socialists who opted to vote for Obama understood that it was a vote against racism and white supremacy, not an endorsement of the electoral system. Elections don't make a difference, but they do consume the political agenda of this country nonetheless. We are told that this is the most democratic country in the world. Yet it coexists quite comfortably with the most undemocratic economic structure ever, capitalism. A tiny elite rule this country. Who can run for president anyway? You have to have lots of money or get the backing of the ruling class and get their millions in order to win. You cannot become president without millions and millions of dollars. That's democracy. All the bluster every day that goes on in Washington, the reality is that it's nothing more than who will administer the trillions stolen from the working class. We get a tiny, tiny portion for our needs while a huge portion goes to war. Who voted on that, I want to know. The real issues are never taken up in a serious way, like a raise in the minimum wage. Why did it take decades just to get same-sex marriage? What's so revolutionary about that? Nothing. But all next year, the airwaves will be filled with news about the elections, as if it all matters. But let's take a minute. Let us look around us like Marxists must do. Let us analyze this moment in order to figure out our next steps. 
I would argue, and our party argues, that this is a decisive moment. It is the moment to seize the time, to look ahead and forge a path for not only struggle, but for change. This is the moment to talk about the end of capitalism and the birth of revolutionary socialism. This is why we are running a slate in the name of a revolutionary party. In 2008, the masses were riding high. Youth, people of color, and progressives all thought that a black president might mean real change. There was hope, but things only got worse, didn't they? Because no election can change capitalism at a dead end. It never could, no matter what phase capitalism is in. But objective conditions are changing. Workers are suffering more and more. Student debt is atrocious. How can you even sleep at night with that debt? Anti-trans violence is criminal. Mass incarcerations are criminal. Mass deportations are criminal. Anti-Muslim racism is sickening. Attacks on women go on and on. Queer people still don't have full rights. Racism and police terror is rampant and carried out with impunity. Black and brown people are shot down in the streets like damn dogs and nothing is done about it, nothing. Housing, the climate crisis, healthcare, and so on and so on, all are creating a perfect storm, a perfect storm for upheaval and struggle. After all, how many more markets are there for the ruling class to make their obscene profits? Capitalism is at a dead end. And in the mix, you throw in the bourgeois elections and the issues become derailed and blurred for the people. This is why we are running an election campaign, a revolutionary campaign to remind the people that it doesn't matter who is in the White House. What matters is who is in the streets. <laughs> when, a, when a storm, when a storm hits, what do you do? You find shelter, you find a way to stay dry. Well, when the storm of struggle and upheaval hits, we want to help lead the masses to shelter. And that shelter is revolutionary socialism. The shelter light in the dark with the light of class analysis, a Marxist-Leninist analysis, that that is the only way forward out of this morass. For example, a laid off worker who is losing her home, if she is sunk in despair and depression, can we reach out to them to say, it's not your fault. This is not an individual problem. This is the system's fault. I'm sure that's what Detroit is doing every day. Our candidates will say, fight back. Occupy your home if you have to. The bourgeois elections provide no answer whatsoever and our campaign will work nonstop to counter that. Our candidates won't just be talking about our revolutionary platform, which you will hear more about in the days to come. We won't just be talking or writing statements. Our candidates will be at demonstrations, at rallies, at meetings like they have been doing already most of their lives. They will travel across the country and raise the need for struggle independent of the capitalist parties. They will declare that is the people who have real power in society. The working class need only to wield that power for change. If there is an action in Vermont against the Klan, for example, our candidates are gonna be there. <laughs> right now, what is raised hour after hour on the airwaves are, is quite frightening if you don't have a revolutionary analysis. Donald Trump. Racist scumbag, this pompous, foolish billionaire, idiot, who has offended women so deeply, who has profoundly insulted Mexicans and immigrants, is dominating the agenda in ways that raise your blood pressure. And even though Trump has directed his racist vitriol towards Mexicans, make no mistake about it, it is just as much a message to the Black Lives Matter movement. We would laugh it off if it wasn't so dangerous. Between Trump and Carson both, 
their political views are setting back the class struggle decades. Both rail against political correctness. They say that political correctness is hurting this country. Those are cold words for unleashing racism to turn black the clock before the civil rights movement. Our candidates will let them know we are not going back not just oppressed workers, but all workers. We will not go back to the days before an eight hour day, even though we are working more than eight hours a day. Concessions that we won through our struggle. Our candidates will declare that racism is not, is not just an issue for black and brown people. This is an issue for white workers as well, because racism is meant to divide and conquer the working class. We know that in a time of economic crisis, when conditions are bleak, dangerous demagogues rise up and fill a vacuum. They are often unchallenged until it's too late. Are we going to allow that to happen? That is why we are going to march with our candidates and everyone who wants to fight at both the Democratic and Republican conventions next year to declare that the real socialists are not inside the convention, they're outside in the streets. Isn't it time? Isn't it time? Isn't it time for another, even better Chicago 68? Some liberal pundits are worried that capitalism is going too far. They are worried that the austerity measures and the rampant racism will rock the boat too much. That's why you hear Robert Wright talking about capitalism and raising the minimum wage, because they're fucking worried. <laughs> these attacks are, these guys are telling the ruling class, hey, you might be going too far, better watch out. Some of those little people down there might get some ideas. And in the midst of this, along comes Bernie Sanders. I watched him on the interview last night. Very interesting guy. He's a mensch, I have to say that, he's a mensch. Now, in a way, Sanders has done us a favor, sort of. His mention of democratic socialism led to a huge spike in interest of socialism. And that's good, kind of a step forward. But it can also be a step back because our candidates must explain that we don't want just a soft, kinder capitalism. We don't want just more of the wealth. We want all that wealth. We created that wealth and we want it back. And so we are entering the race because we want to jump up and shout and wave our arms around and tell the workers and oppressed, here we are, here's the solution, join us, fight like us. Fight back, build the struggle. Don't accept the Republicans who are Tea Party bigots and neo-fascists like many white workers are getting caught up in that shit. Don't accept the Democrats either because they want to maintain the status quo. That's what our campaign will do. In the party, when our leadership discussed the campaign, the yes or the no, the who and the what, some of our comrades raised, well, what about Latino representation on the slate? I am proud to say, and I was touched, that especially my black comrades, John Parker from California, raised this issue several times. And he kept saying, you gotta, gotta be black and brown, black and brown, black and brown. And comrade Larry Holmes also raised the black and brown issue and raised, well, what about having two women as candidates? What about a, a queer representation on the slate? And I wanna thank my comrades for this insightful concern. And we want to find a way, when we take our campaign to California and elsewhere, that we raise these issues in the most thoughtful way. And we have some ideas about that we'll talk about in the days ahead. But as a Latina, as a comrade, as a communist, as an activist who has been fighting for Chicano liberation for a very long time, 
In defense of immigrants, this is what I have to say about the Latino issue. The road to Latino liberation is through the black struggle. Latinos need representation and liberation, all right. But they need unity in order to win that liberation. The road to liberation for white workers is through the black struggle. The path, the path to shelter in the storm declares not only in thought, in deed, but that elections will matter when black lives matter. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Elections will also matter when brown lives matter, when the lives of poor and working people matter, we love our class deeply, all our class, with all their wars, with all their, with all their stuff. We love all our class. But workers' lives won't matter until we have a socialist revolution right here in the belly of the beast. And one of the surest ways to bring socialism to the United fucking States, no social democracy, not, not social democracy, not in none of this democratic socialism stuff. Uh-uh, that -uh, ain't it. We need revolutionary socialism. We need, we need workers running society. We know, we know we won't get that in 2016, but we're laying the basis by developing class consciousness. And that's why the sure way to bring all that through is unconditional and firm solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. And that is why today, right now, in the wake of Ferguson, in the wake of Baltimore, for Trayvon, for Eric, for Tamir, for Sandra Bland, for Manuel Angel Diaz, for Islan Nettles, and for all the victims of police terror. I am so proud to present our Workers' World Party candidates for the 2016 presidential election, my sister and comrade Monica Moorhead for president. Stop calling her. Call somebody else. And for vice president, I am so proud to announce my brother, Lamont Lily from North Carolina. 